Welcome back. All right, now the next thing that we have to fix up is how the asteroids are spawning. So like I said, they are still spawning around the edges of the room itself. So if you remember in our game object, in the room start, that's where we were spawning all the asteroids. And right here you can see it's kind of relative to the room width and height, which isn't what we want. I want them to spawn relative to the camera instead. And because we're going to use the same code for spawning asteroids at the start and in our alarm zero, which was when we were spawning more asteroids every few seconds, I don't want to just copy and paste the code in two places. I want to only have it in one place where I can change it. So to do that, I'm going to use an external script that isn't in this game object. So if we come into script. I'm going to call this one spawn off camera. And this is going to be a really handy script because we're going to use it for the asteroids in this video, but in later videos, we're going to use this to spawn enemy ships as well. And that's why it's great to have it in an external script because we can set up different arguments, just like how we use functions right here and we put in arguments or inputs. We are going to set up our own input. So, for example, we're going to set up what kind of object to create. So we can pass in whatever object we want and it's going to create it off the camera. So that's essentially what we're doing here. We're making our own function. Now to actually get this to show up nicely. So if I come back to the game object and say I wanted to run this script and I type in spawn off camera, this will run the script. It's going to make it run. But in here, it doesn't have any arguments or anything. It doesn't even have the name of it like these ones do, these built-in ones. So to make this appear, to make it easier for us to know what inputs to put into it, we can set up a description, which is the name of the script, and also some arguments. And the two arguments I'm going to put are the object and also the number of objects to spawn. So again, let's come back to here. And if we give it a moment, then there is our description and our argument. So now we could put, for example, OBJ asteroid and 40. Already you can see that it's kind of complaining. This little warning has come up to say that it's actually expecting no inputs. And that's just because in the script itself, we haven't told it to use them. And now, by the way, what I just did is I middle clicked on this and it opened up the script right here. So I'm going to just give us a little bit more room and let's start making the script. So first of all, let's just try and think about getting one object to spawn before we take into account this. First of all, I'm going to set up a variable and I'm going to make this one equal. So argument zero. And this argument is referring to whatever inputs that we put into here. Zero just means the first one. So argument one is referring to this one. Argument zero is this one. And now instead of actually calling it and using argument zero in the actual uh, coding, I can refer to it as object, which makes more sense to me because that's what it represents. And I'm going to use number for num. And I am using temporary variables here. We don't want to actually be saving these variables into the object that calls the script. I only need these to exist when this script runs. So this way it will be deleted once the script is finished. All right, so in the end, our end output is going to be some kind of instance. We're going to use instance create layer, and then we need some kind of x, y value. And I'm going to call this x, x, y, y. And the object that we are going to create is going to be obj. So whatever input that we have put into here. All right. I might also just set up XX and YY here. Now, instead of having a specific range of variables for what X could possibly be, where the object could spawn in the room, technically it could be anywhere in the room, just not in the camera. So first of all, I'm going to just say anywhere in the room. So from zero to room width, the object can spawn anywhere within there for both X and Y. All right. 
However, it might pick an X and Y value that is within the bounds of the camera. And we know, given our variables, that the camera object, so we can head back to the camera, we have these variables that we can refer to. So we know that the camera will be at whatever camera X and camera Y currently is as it's following the player around. And we know that its left side will be X, Y, and then its bottom right side will be camera X plus camera width and camera Y plus camera height. So that is the kind of rectangle of the camera. Now, at the moment, we can't actually refer to the camera width and height because it's within the camera object. Of course, we could just go obj camera dot camera x and we could access it that way. But I'm actually going to instead, because of how important these variables are going to be, and I think we're going to use them in other scripts as well, I'm going to make them global variables so that any objects can access them. So they're going to be kind of like the score and the lives. So to do that, we can just add global dot to it. So it's kind of like using the dot operator to refer to an object, only now we are referring to a kind of global object or a global scope. Now, instead of going to every place where I put camera X and putting global dot in front of it, I'm going to control shift F camera X. I'm going to replace every instance of camera X in our code with global dot camera X that will automatically kind of turn it into a global variable for us. I'm going to do the same with camera Y and the same with camera width and camera height. Excellent. So now that has replaced all of them with global variables. And by the way, I'm not going to do that with the display objects and hindsight is important here because while we are going to be referring to the camera's position, no object kind of really needs to know the end game resolution width and height. Something like an inventory or um, text might need to know about that. And in that case, we might make them global as well. But for now, we only need these to be global. So now I need a way of kind of saying if X, Y, that point in the room is within the rectangle of the camera, I want it to pick a different X and Y position. So there's a few ways we can do this, but the way I'm going to use is just to say, if we pick a point that's within the rectangle, pick a different point. So roll the dice again. So to do that, I'm going to say while point in rectangle. So while that point is existing in the rectangle, and we'll put in all of the inputs in a moment, but I just want to get the logic flowing properly. So if that's true, then we are going to choose this again. All right, and now let's just put in the point. So if the point in the rectangle to so x, x, y, y is the actual point, and now the rectangle points are the global.camera x, global.camera y. This might be a bit of a long one. So that's the top left. The bottom left is global dot camera x plus global dot camera width. And I might actually do this over several lines so that you can still see what I'm doing. And finally, global dot camera y plus global dot camera height. All right, so while xxyy is within this camera, we are going to pick a different one. And if we had used if, it would only do this once, but while is a loop, that will keep running until this right here is not true. So this is going to loop as many times as it needs to until XXYY is no longer within the camera. So like I said, that's not the best way to do it because we might be unnecessarily running this a few times, but it is a nice simple way to illustrate that. So now that is going to select an appropriate X and Y value and then create it. But we want to do this a number of times. So we actually want to wrap this entire thing in a repeat statement. And the number of times we want it to repeat, well, it's going to be this number. So whatever this value is. So all we have to do is set repeat num. And I'm going to highlight all of that. I'm going to tab them forwards and close it off here. 
And that's all we need to do. Now, I am actually going to add one more thing and it's going to be some padding around the camera. And that's just because some of our asteroids are quite large. And if we spawn right at the camera, we can, we're going to see the edge of them kind of creep over the camera before the rest of it should. So this is going to just maintain a little bit of distance outside of the camera for us. And I'm going to pick 64, but you can make this smaller or larger. And I'm just going to add that to our values. So I'm going to add that minus pad here and plus padding here. All right. Great, so we have a really handy script now for creating objects outside of the camera. So we can now head back to the game object and we can delete all of this stuff. Right here is actually the code that we had for playing the audio and I have just disabled that for now so that it's not running as we play. And now in this one, we can also delete all of this and spawn off camera. OBJ asteroid and just one. And I'm going to reduce this a little bit because since the room is so much larger now, I want it to fill up a little bit quicker. So let's save and run the game. But now, if you'll notice just then, the asteroids actually spawned inside the camera. And in fact, one spawned right on top of the player. And this isn't what we're expecting. We're expecting no asteroids spawn inside the camera. That's what our script was for. So why is this happening? And the reason for this is actually that this code right here, spawn of camera, is running before the camera updates its position. By default, remember that the camera will be in the top left corner of the screen at the beginning of the room. And since this is happening in the room start event, this is going to be one of the first events to run. And the camera doesn't update its position until the step event. And that is going to happen after the room start events of any object. So we're going to have to run this code one time in the room start event. And we could put that here. You can just copy paste that in. We just have to put it in a place after where we've set the target. So then right here, we can check if that target exists. It will set the position and that will update the camera's position when this object runs its room start. Now, we still might have trouble if the game object runs its room start before the camera object. And the way that we can check who's going to run their event first is we can check basically their depth for one. They actually have the same depth. They're both in the instances layer and we haven't changed their depth at all. So they'll be at the same depth. So then what's going to determine it is this thing right here. So the instance creation order, which you can access right here. And you can see that the game object is actually created first. So if we just change this and drag the camera on top, that means the camera is going to be created first and then it will run its events first. All right, so now if we run the game, we have no asteroids spawning on top of ourselves. And you might want to test that just two to three times just to make sure it's definitely not happening. But yeah, that should fix that problem. All right, so that's it for this video. We've set up the camera. In the next one, we're going to be having a bit more fun. We're going to be adding some parallax to the stars. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.